All right, well, good morning at CBGR and our affiliates. Happy Monday to everybody. Uh, I hope everybody had a, a great weekend. Um, so today we have as our affiliate spotlight is Nicole Menard with uh, Fidelity National Title. So without further ado, we'll hand it over to Nicole so she can start the meeting. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for allowing me to join your meeting, Peter and uh, Ruben. It's a pleasure. Um, as you know, fraud is on the rise. We're all sharing this information with you. We're asking for um, proof, especially with seniors, properties that are free and clear. And so if we ask for, let's say, the statement of information, which we ask for all the time to confirm that liens belong to the property owners. Um, if the property's you know, free and clear, there are no open loans, we ask for proof that those loans were paid off. It is for a reason, it's for the protection of the property owners. So just wanna remind you of that. But I wanna share a story that, that um, happened to us personally, my daughter, who's 18 years old. Um, I was working on my taxes over the weekend and found that there were two W-2 forms, one from Chick-fil-A who she worked with, another one with a company that we have no idea who they are. And the income, I said, there's no way. She's 18 years old. This cannot be hers had her name, our home address, and the last four digits of her social security number. So somebody got a hold of her information. They um, have filed, and I reached out to our CPA immediately. He said, file her taxes, send them over right away so we can get it submitted before these other people try to um, file this because they will... Um, potentially have a large refund coming back to them. Mm -hmm. So good news is I got the um, taxes filed for her and we got through before they did. So if you're working on your taxes and I did read this just last week, it's important to submit <coughs> your taxes as soon as you can. Don't wait because of fraud like this. Um, somebody gets a hold of your social security number, they can submit the taxes before you do. And if there's refunds coming back, guess who that money's potentially going to go back to? The fraudsters. So I just want to make you guys aware to be cautious out there and um, be vigilant, be alert. Okay. And I thank you so much for your time. I know this isn't so much on the title, but I wanted to bring it to your attention. And I did call the police department. We are filing a police report. They also told me that there's a website that you can go to, and I can put that in the chat, and that's identitytheft.org. You can file information there, and you can also go to annualreport.com to check your um, credit report with the three credit reporting agencies for free once a year. So I'll put that in the chat and please remember us for your title needs. We're here to help you. We're here to help you grow your business and look forward to working with you all and wishing you much success and have a fantastic day. Thank you so much for this time. I wonder what the, that really did go through and then they, uh, the IRS refund the money. What is the consequence? Yeah, really. I mean, I, I, honestly, the problem is, my thought is my daughter, she's 18. She didn't make over $200,000. That's what <laughs> they show on the reporting. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. This is a crazy world. It is. It is. So, you you know, be vigilant. Mm. Make sure you're reading everything. You know, check your mail. Um, fortunately, I caught it. I mean, I... I put it away and I thought, oh, I should have pulled it out sooner. And I'm I'm thankful that I did it at this time and didn't push it off. But, you know, make sure you're opening your mail because I stuck it to the side and, and didn't open it when it first came in a few weeks ago. Hmm. But that, uh, <clears throat> before, before you reported to the police, did you call the uh, the party that uh, issued the uh, W-2? 
Yes, and they're out of Washington, and, oh. and it says growers. And so we oh. thought, ooh, I wonder if it's uh, marijuana. It looks like <laughs> they grow fruit and vegetables. Uh -huh. And I called asking for their HR department. They asked who I was, and I said I was from an attorney's office. Mm. They put me on hold, and then it went right to voicemail. Wow, that is definitely a fraud. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They're, they're, I mean, they had a website, shows the website, shows a P.O. box phone number. So, you know, mm -hmm. obviously they, they have it all set up, I'm sure. Yeah. They're definitely finding new ways of uh, taking advantage of people. That's for sure. <clears throat> yes. Always. All right. Well, thank you, Nicole. I know it wasn't real estate related, but it's uh, good information for, you know, to safeguard our agents from that potential fraud. And their clients to let their clients know as very well. True. That is a very good topic to start calling all your sphere of influence, right? Mm -hmm. Say top of mind. I'm sure that they would, uh, you know, like the information and stuff, you know, and that you have that you took the time out of your day to call them, right? Okay, let's move on to uh, Marie. Marie, good morning. Good, good morning, everyone. Marie Paramore with Contemporary Escrow here to help you grow your business. What can I say? Um, our market is, it, it's slowing down. It has slowed down. Mm -hmm. But the easy part is I think we're in that situation where we have a lot of buyers out there, but it's just not a lot of inventory. So the buyers are out there and they're still putting offers on properties. Um, I have several agents who have properties where they have 14, you know, offers on a property. So there's still activity. It's probably a little in uneven right now because we have more buyers and sellers, but things are still, <clears throat> offers are still being made, which means escrows are being done. One of the things I'm starting to see in the market far more than usual is a lot of trust uh, sales. Um, individuals are passing off. And I think that's why we're seeing more fluctuations in heirs that, have to sell these individual properties so we have more trust sales the biggest thing i can tell you on your trust sales if you see your properties in a trust when you do your property profile when you go to take your listing make sure you have adequate trust documents make sure you see a copy of that trust make sure the successor trustee is who they say it is um i just recently had a trust where um the parents created a trust their son was a successor trustee the parents both passed away. The son refinanced the property, took the property out of the trust for the refinance. And then um, I think one of the parents was alive. So let me hold that open. One of the parents might've been alive. Um, he took the property out of the trust and then the parents passed away. Well, the property was out of the trust and he needed to at some point sell, but now he had taken it out of the trust. So guess what? He had to go to probate. Yeah. And after the father passed, he had to go to probate in order to sell. So your transactions can get very complicated because this individual, not only did he have to go to probate to um, do basically what they call a Hickstead order, where they put this property based on the intention of the parents, based on the trust, but also it they recreated this trust to make him not the successor trustee, but the trustee. So they made him the trustee of the estate and they named the estate after him, which changed the vesting on this property altogether. So your your trust sales can get very complicated. So make sure, you know, when you do have a trust a transaction, call myself, call your title people, keep us in front of it, um, because we would definitely want to make sure your contracts are being written properly. Because in this case scenario, even if my agent wrote her trust, her contract in six, as this individual as successor trustee, his whole entire vesting change. So his contract will not be in co compliance with his escrow. So at some point, an addendum will need to be drawn to correct your seller. That's all I have for you. You guys know where to find me. I'm here to help you. Um, anything you need, um, I'm here for you. Have a great week. Talk to everyone soon. Thank you, Marie. On that same note, it'd be a good practice to add to your prospecting list professionals in, in that aspect. Like, for instance, uh, attorneys that deal with trust, um, anybody that has, you know, a book of business with, you know, home buyers or home sellers. So add that, add those professionals to your sphere of influence and you could start prospecting them, you know, and exchange services and stuff. 
Um, Frank, good morning. How are you? Hey, good morning, Ruben, Peter, everybody. Thank you guys so much. Happy, happy Monday. Um, man, you know what? So far, it's you guys are right on point with a lot of good stuff. I mean, where when Nicole mentioned about the whole thing with uh, with the inc with the income taxes, it's not real estate related, but it's human related, and that's 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 real stuff. That's real stuff, and it could impact something in real estate because just for example, I mean, and this is this is where it's a little bit unfortunate when you deal with a lot of buyers that are I ten buyers. It's great when you have those item buyers that those are the good ones that when they have real um, item, which is a, a individual tax information number, some of them tend to have a fake social security number and you, you, you kind of like feel bad for them, but at the same time also you don't, they have to just do their due diligence and do the right thing, getting those proper numbers put on their W-2s and their tax returns and so forth. Because if they don't, that number's attached to somebody and maybe the person's dead. What if they're not? I know, I know, I know, uh, I know a real estate agent's little girl that she's nine years old and she, she was, she had a W-2. Well, she had it filed when they filed her taxes and they put her as a dependent, they couldn't file their taxes. This is the real estate agent and, and the, and the spouse. They couldn't file the taxes because the child had a W-2 already attached, or at least her social attached to somebody else's filing. So it's it gets it can be really detrimental to someone's income, some situation. So it is real estate related. So uh, so I feel bad for a situation with you, Nicole, but I'm glad you're getting it worked out. Mm -hmm. um, moving on to the whole thing with the trust, it's it's important. You got to just tell people got trust, got trust. Do that little hashtag because it's important. Because once someone dies, it's a whole different story. It's case with case in point. What if you have someone that's married? They're looking at selling a house, but this person passed away, and it wasn't in a trust. Well, instead of you having a five hundred thousand dollar capital gain. Uh, protection, you're only down to 250. That's a big deal right there. That's $250,000 that you lost after passing somebody, someone passes away. So having a trust also protects it. Uh, but just know your laws, just know enough to, to know how to protect your clients. Um, talking about real estate right now, mortgage. I mean, mortgage rates are going up and down and we tend to see that the waves, like when the mortgage rates go up, then the wave comes in with buyers, that the waves are like, oh, we don't want to buy now. But tell your buyers and sellers that, hey, the importance of wa of waiting and how not how waiting can actually hurt somebody. If you wait when rates go down, then it might might be worse. Price might go up. So just give someone a free analysis. I'm happy to help them and anyone as a mortgage lender or even as not as a mortgage lender, but just talk some numbers and see if it makes sense to help someone buy now if they're able to do it, weather the storm, and get into that house, you know, with a better situation later on. Thanks, Frank. Well, you know how how they what's the saying? If they if you can afford it, it's worth to buy, right? That's it. So if you if 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 a buyer qualifies, it's a good time to buy. So and there's two things. There's a difference between qualifying and affording. Because what if I could buy a million dollar house, but what if I have debts because I take care of mom, uh, grandma, you know, uh, tuition? There's a different situation that I can qualify for this house, but can I afford it? It's a different story. So make sure that people know the difference. Very true. Very true. Thank you, Frank. Always a pleasure. Mark, good morning. How are you? You made it on. I did make it on. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Just with the recent rains and all that, um, just want to make sure that you as the seller's agent and you as the buyer agent understand how the seller reporting a claim may cause a delay because even if they have, the sellers have a minor roof leak and all that, and then they call it in to their insurance company. Um, it may or may not be covered, most likely will not. And then there's a claim that's gonna be an open claim. And most companies cannot close on insurance unless that claim is closed. So there, there'll be documentation that's needed for either remediation or just that it was closed without pay. So that's been hanging up a lot of deals, especially with all these that are, that are uh, rains that we've had in the recent uh, weeks. So I've, I've been, uh, informing my realtor buddies to just uh, have that conversation with your sellers and and don't the first call is not to to find out whether or not the insurance covers it because if they happen to call your your sellers happen to call a, a claims office <laughs> instead of the agent itself uh, that's reported as a claim even though their intention may not be to report a claim in and that can hang up deals. Again, I'm always here to assist you with condo or, or home insurance, regardless of, of whether or not I'm part of the transaction. Also know that 
that start on the process as soon as you get uh, the offer accepted if you're buyer's agent because it is sometimes taking five to 15 days to obtain a binder for home insurance. Thank you. Uh, Mark, I want to ask you a question where you, you live in a, a condo complex uh, where uh, one of the owners is uh, uh, upstairs of your, uh, your condo and then uh, incur a substantial leak uh, because of uh, the upstairs uh, uh, owner's negligence. And it turns out that, that the owner of the, that, uh, that uh, condo cannot afford to, to uh, repair. So would, would the HOA come in and, um, and uh, put the bill? Yes and no, depending on what the CCNR says. So let's let's just use the example, and this has happened. I've had a claim on this before where where they, they left the bathtub or sink yeah. running and, and it overflowed mm -hmm. and they didn't know it for hours and it caused damage. The the way normally it happens is that the CCNRs, if, if, if the, the common walls are considered common areas, then the master policy has to be the one that, that mm -hmm. um, addresses the, the issue and covers the claim. If there is not, and hopefully the, the tenants above have condo insurance, then you could go after their liability because it is negligence. It was their, the, the damage was a result of their uh, leaving the water running and all that. So that's what you can go after. The third layer of protection one has is then going after their own HO6 policy and mm -hmm. hopefully there's coverage. But remember the HO6 policy only covers that which the CCNR says is the individual owner's uh, property and, and dwelling. So if the CCRNR doesn't say that the ceilings and the walls and all are, are unique to the condo owner, then then the only recourse is either the liability from the, the upstairs tenant or the master HOA policy. Yeah, so would that be a good idea to, uh, in that case, uh, to uh, buy additional insurance for uh, your own uh, condo unit? It's always a good idea uh, because if let's just say that that they can't live in the place, the the condo would put them on someplace else while it's being remodeled. But the the un, the unfortunate thing is you can't they can't buy insurance to cover the the structure if the structure mm -hmm. is not uniquely theirs. I so uh, one thing I've been also finding out, which is I've never seen in my career, is that on some of the major condo complexes near the brush areas and all that. I'm finding out that now there's not coverage on those uh, because they can't find it. And so deals are being hung up because there's not a way that, that insurance can be had. And so when when your your buyers are, are going to these complexes that might be in our foothills and whatnot, uh, let's, I, I would say that while you're making the offer, make sure that the master policy is in force and there is one no. because it's, some realtors are finding that on the back end. And, so I've heard of, of a lender waiving that, but I can't imagine a lot of lenders would waive that requirement. I see. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, Mark. Thank you. It's always a pleasure. Do we have any questions for any of our affiliates? I believe that's the last of our affiliates. I think so, yes. Any questions for Nicole, Frank, Marie, or Mark? All right, well, thank you to our affiliates for joining us this morning. <clears throat> Moving on, a um, couple shout outs, birthday shout outs for this week. Kevin NG, Joanne Lee, Nino Jubilado, Jose Rodriguez, and Hugo Chow. Happy birthday to all of you, okay? A um, <clears throat> couple of reminders for this week as far as training our classes go. We do have our uh, second part two of the 1031 for a commercial meeting. That will be this Wednesday at 10 a.m. That is a virtual meeting, okay? <clears throat> so once again, part two, 1031 exchange, commercial meeting, 10 a.m. on Wednesday, okay? Friday training, we're going to be going over some car forms and in particular the buyer broker agreement, okay? So please join us Friday if you're interested in learning more about the buyer broker agreement. <clears throat> Uh, a couple other reminders, caravans, they're gaining a lot of traction. So uh, last week, we had a couple of our agents have uh, their listing on the caravan. So please take advantage of the caravans, whether you have a listing 
or not, get out there, mingle, and and uh, meet some new people. Uh, just a reminder: stay focused, uh, maintain a positive mark, a positive attitude towards this market. Uh, it, it is slowing down a little bit. The rates climbed a little bit. <clears throat> hopefully, they start coming back down in the months to come, as hopefully the Feds reverse their decision and start lowering the interest rates by a quarter as they promised late last year. But just stay focused um, and you know keep a positive outlook and stuff. Um, <clears throat> stay in touch with your sphere of influence. I can't say it in, enough. You know um, that's what's going to get you business. Uh, keeping top of mind with your with all of your contacts. Okay, just small talk. Talk to people. That's that's the name of the game right now. Okay, just they, if they if anybody thinks of real estate, you want them to think of you first. Uh, <clears throat> continuously learning right now, since it's a little slow, it's a good time to refine your skills and sharpen your knowledge. You know, um, there's abundance of classes, uh, not only here at Coldwell Banker George Realty, but also in your CB desk under CB uh, University. So, you know, you can learn at your leisure and stuff at any time. It's, it's on demand. There's recordings and there's also live sessions you can uh, register for so so that with that keep in mind that you have um access to all of our agents have access to moxie which has moxie present moxie engage and moxie impress okay present you can send some very beautiful cmas to your clients uh <clears throat> most cmas do not look like this they're very intuitive so uh, moxie engage that's a free crm to keep top of mind with your with your sphere of influence. And then Moxie Impress, if you have a <clears throat> listing, Moxie will automatically pull that data from the MLS and create a marketing campaign for you, uh, including a unique property website, a video that you could upload into onto YouTube, a virtual tour, and numerous postcards, social media postings, um, flyers, you name it, open house, just sold, just listed. So <clears throat> if you haven't logged on to it, please do so familiar, familiarize yourself with Moxie. Um, also, I want to let everybody know that we just received um, our new marketing presentation folders. I have them in my office. Doug, I'll get you some, I'll get you a couple of boxes for the Arcadia agents. Um, these are Primarily for your listing presentations, they're beautiful high gloss folders where you could put in all your um, uh, printed material and present it to your clients and just, you know, make your presentation that much more uh, professional and presentable, okay? Um, lastly, I just want to remind everybody that uh, if you, if, uh, to all of our agents that we do have a uh, two recording uh, recruiting platforms where you can earn extra income. If you know of any uh, agents outside of our brokerage or act actually outside of the Coldwell Banker um, uh, uh, family, um, you can earn some additional income both on a brokerage level and on a corporate level for for just referring agents that are thinking of moving. Okay, so just send that information to either myself or Doug, and we'll take it from there. And then before I hand it off to Doug for a new business in Arcadia, we are having Brainstorming Thursdays, which is a brand new um, pilot program that we're, we're developing. We're committed to it for this uh, whole year. It's the first Thursday of every month. So next, let me see what the date, next Wednesday, uh, next Thursday on the 7th, Yeah. We'll be having our second brainstorming where Peter, myself, and Michelle, and hopefully uh, Doug can uh, attend as well. It's live in person only. We're not going to be uh, Zooming this, okay? This is intended to be engageful in person where you could bring, pretty much bring anything to the table and, and discuss with Peter, myself, Michelle, or Doug uh, any topic you would like, uh, learn from you know any tech or or just brainstorm, okay? So that's from 3 to 4 p.m. every first Thursday of every month, which the next one, again, is going to be March 7th. 
uh, put it in your calendar. Uh, but if you don't remember, reminders, uh, we're going to send out reminders to everybody prior to that Thursday. So don't worry. Um, okay. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Doug for the uh, new business for, for Arcadia office. Doug, the floor is yours. Hello, everybody. Thank you very much, Ruben. I appreciate it. Uh, you know, uh, a lender one, I think it was a lender told me one time, you talk about these rates, you know, it, we really expect them to be dropping by now and they're not. But uh, this person told me you marry the house, but you rent the rate. So, they, so they, you they, buy the they, house they. at today's market and when rates come down, which they will eventually, you can refinance. But as the house market continues to go up, you're gaining equity. So it's always a great time to buy. And speaking of buyers, um, I know a lot of you are working on buyers, but I'm telling you, our typical agent in the office is getting six and eight offers uh, competing against their buyer. And when they have a listing, they're getting multiple offers. So what does that tell you? Work hard on your listings. Don't drop your buyers. Keep working with them, but work hard on your listings. And the sphere of influence, great time to talk to your sphere of influence. I have all, way, all kinds of ways that I contact my sphere of influence. I would love to share them with anybody. Call me anytime. I'd love to talk to you. Uh, also, Ruben, you know, I try to get um, inspiration from somewhere, right? So I'm in a Chinese restaurant yesterday. Um, it, 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 it's uh, in South Pasadena, and I'm looking at the at the uh, at the fortune cookie. <laughs> Didn't inspire me at all. Nothing in the fortune cookie inspired me. But last night I was opening up a bottle of wine, and on the cork it said. Follow your passion, work hard, and stay humble. So sometimes you can get inspiration in a bottle of wine, I suppose. But anyway, uh, that's that's good things to do, guys. Work hard, follow your passion, and stay humble. Well, here in Arcadia, we have a, a few listings I want to tell you about. Two of them just came in this morning. Uh, we have 1,000 uh, First Avenue in Arcadia. It's a lease, three-bedroom, three-bath, mm -hmm. Alden Lye, 4380. Uh, Peggy Shaw's got a townhouse in Rosemead on Walnut Grove, two bedroom, three bath, six forty nine. This morning uh, we have a new listing in Covina on Tudor. It's a three bedroom, one bath. It's actually got two baths, but one's not permitted. Seven thirty nine. Paxton has that listing, and just this morning Alma came in with with a uh, with a residential sale. You're not going to believe this price. It's 1244 East Avenue, R2 in Palmdale. Three bed and one bath house, 394. Hmm. That's affordable. You don't mind the drive. Uh, we do have a couple of great closings. Michael Chan just closed one in Arcadia for a million five seventy. And Alma closed her in Rosemead, one million one fifty. And a couple of our recent sales, Michael Chan just uh well, it's a brand new home. It's actually, I guess, a referral. His buyer, one million two eighty nine. But the commission he's getting on a referral doesn't have to keep a file. Thirty thousand dollars, not bad. Uh, David Shin double ended his Alameda in Los Angeles for four sixty. And Alma, bless her heart, had a listing last week on Pamela Road in Monrovia. Now she sold it, eight hundred thousand dollars. So Alma's on fire as. A lot of my agents are doing really good, uh, uh, Ruben. So uh, I hope all of you are out there talking to your spirit of influence, talking to people. Uh, I always like the phrase, don't be a secret agent. There are people out there you just bump into and they have a house to sell. You don't know. I, I can tell you story after story what's happened to me and people I know. It's just being out there, talking to people, being around people and let them know that you're an agent. And then if they know and like you and trust you, they're going to work with you. Okay, so uh, best of luck to everybody. Have a great week. Uh, Ruben, I won't be here next week. Uh, unfortunately, I have to uh, take a vacation. Yeah. Peter's trying to get rid of me. Unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, right? I'm, I'm happy for you. <laughs> thank you. I'm happy for me too. All right, thank you guys. Have a great hey, week, everybody. Doug, don't forget to pick up that box of uh, uh, new presentation folders. They're really nice. Great. Next time okay. I'm in there. They're thank in you. my office, okay? Okay. Thank congratulations you. Thank you. to congratulations to all the, all your agents as well. And yours too. Yeah. Thank you.
Yeah, you're in. We're all in the talking business, so get out there and talk to people, and and you know, keep continually add to your sphere of influence as well. You know, if you add one or two per, people per day, if you meet them at Home Depot or at the movies or wherever at church, add them to your sphere of influence. By the end of the year, you added six, seven hundred people to your sphere of influence. The small things lead to larger things. They yeah. lead to success. So just keep plowing away. You're plowing away. You know, it's like farm. It's just like farming. You know, in in a real farm, you have to prepare your soil, plant the seeds, and you have to nurture it. And then eventually, you get the flowers and the fruits and the plants and all that. But you have to start somewhere, right? All right. Ruben, can I interrupt one more time? Sure. I, I'm sorry, but I promise I'm a picture listing, so I have to do it. Okay. I, she said it's a lowest price house in San Gabriel, three bedroom, two bath, over 1,200 square feet, uh, on Delmore Avenue in San Gabriel. The price is 898, Camellia Vera. Sounds like a great deal, guys. Get out there and sell it. Thank you. And if you want additional information, check your inbox and your email. I sent that out this morning. Thank uh, you. It has, it has that flyer for all the uh, um, for Camellia's uh, listing. It's a very nice property for a good price. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right. Uh, Alhambra business for the past couple of weeks, because we did not have a uh, meeting the uh, last Monday because of President's Day. Uh, Marcy Velos has a new listing on um, in Los Angeles. I think it's like the Glass Cell, Mount Washington area for 1.5. This is actually a multifamily. I think it's five units. Uh, so it's commercial sale. Um, <clears throat> and then for this week, we have uh, Stephen Tran has a residential property listing in San Gabriel at 1.899. Uh, Marcy Velos has another property in, I think, the same general area uh, for 895. This is a single family residence. Um, and Kevin Lee has a residential property in San Bernardino for 480. Those are the listings. Uh, new sales for the last couple of weeks. Uh, Christine Fenn has a lease <clears throat> in Arcadia. Uh, Paxton Chow has a lease also in Los Angeles. And then um, for the previous week, Sophia Chow has a residential property she put into escrow and Lake Forest for 700,000. I didn't think there was properties in Lake Forest for 700,000, that's a good price. Uh, Jeffrey had a lease in Monterey Park. Um, Dora had a commercial lease in Monterey Park as well. And this was a pretty decent size, so congratulations, Dora. And then uh, Nieda Romo had a mobile home she put into escrow in Adelanto for 50,000. Wow, that's a good price. Oh. Well, congratulations to all those agents. Um, just keep doing the hard work, the daily prospecting, and good things are uh, will come, okay? Despite the, the rates being a little higher than anticipated right now. With that, I'm going to hand it over to Peter Cam so he can uh, give us his update. Hi. Uh, thank you, Ruben. Thank you very much. And good morning, uh, everybody. Koa Bianca George. Uh, now that uh, Chinese New Year's uh, came and passed, and you know, um, uh, the uh, Valentine's Day is also passed, and the President's Day, uh, which was last week, also passed. And now it's a good time to uh, to uh, to resume your uh, business activities, because um, uh, statistically, uh, March to to uh, October is the best. They are the best month for uh, for real estate market. So wrap up your engines and work hard, and hopefully you'll have a very fruitful uh, 2024. Okay, and with that, I would like to share my the uh, market update with you today. Um, and um, and tell you what what's happening in the real estate market. Um, now, you know, you know I am sure that everybody is uh, 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 very concerned about the uh, interest rate and how it is doing. And really, you know, uh, even um, about a month ago, we we're expecting the the Fed to lower the uh, interest rate um, uh, to at least uh, by uh, 225 percentage point uh, in March. Of 2024, but uh, that that is that is not going to happen because they they have the new uh, fresh data that uh, showing that the economy is doing well 
and employment is uh, the, uh, one of the lowest in, 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 uh, in, the, in the recent time. And also um, <clears throat> the, the economy is, uh, is doing good. So they don't want to overheat uh, the, the economy. And also they want to put uh, the in, uh, inflation rate uh, uh, tamed. So um, right now it's at 3.2. They uh, still want to, uh, uh, look, you know, to, um, to reduce it that back down to uh, 2%, uh, which is their goal. But uh, you know the uh, in inflation the rates have been stopping uh, uh, during the last month. So they they said that they are not going to uh, lower the interest rate uh, on uh, in March, and instead they are going to push back uh, to maybe another three months, which is going to be in uh, June of uh, 2024. Now this kind of decision is kind of is not very welcoming in the stock market and uh, and the real estate market because uh, the interest rate play a very bit, uh, vital, uh, pivotal uh, role in, in, in the health uh, of um, uh, stock and uh, real estate. And then can, can you imagine right now the, uh, uh, the Fed uh, fund, uh, 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 the Fed rate is still at 5.5%, which means that the, uh, the prime rate is at 8.5%. And most of the, <laughs> most of the uh, commercial real estate um, interest rate is uh, gauged at uh, prime plus one, which uh, is equivalent to 9.5%. It's almost 10% uh, uh, interest rate compared to uh, a couple of years ago that the interest rate uh, for mortgage is on, was only about 3%, you know? So is it really a substantial uh, the, the increase in, really, uh, in, in, in interest rate? And that is why the real estate market is su in such a, uh, a uh, very, very um, um, a critical moment at this time, and especially uh, they are they are expecting that the uh, commercial real estate uh, uh, loans uh, they they will have a nine hundred twenty seven billion dollar coming due uh, at the uh, at, uh, at the end of uh, first uh, quarter, which is which is uh, next next month. So uh, by that time that they that uh, their loan expire, they either have to re, uh, refinance uh, their their loan or to pay down the loan or just sell the property. So that's a, a big decision for them to make. And, and if that comes uh, uh, to, to such a decision, uh, they will have a very, very uh, dramatic effect on the commercial real estate. So, you know, I am uh, expecting that uh, by the end of uh, March, there will be a, a glut of, uh, of uh, a commercial uh, real estate coming onto the market. And uh, you should be prepared for it. Uh, educate your uh, your um, your client, and uh, you know uh, get some get some good uh, uh, commercial real estate. I know that the, the 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 price of the commercial real estate is still high, but when it comes uh, when they comes out uh, that they are in a desperate uh, um, uh, uh, you know, when they're desperate to sell, then the price will be soft and then drop, uh, drop down considerably. So, um, you know, get, get, get it, get ready, and uh, you know, do some uh, uh, purchase in uh, in, uh, in commercial real estate. Okay, now, <clears throat> so we're talking about the uh, mortgage trade. We are uh, last last uh, couple of uh, weeks. Uh, the when we we were. We are pretty happy that the uh, that the uh, mortgage rate was, was going down. But starting from last week, uh, the mortgage rate suddenly uh, went up because the, uh, they are, they they're expecting that the Fed will not lower the interest rate uh, in, in March. So right now the um, uh, mortgage a thirty year mortgage is about seven percent, and 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 it has the tendency of going up a little bit too. So so that's not a good news for uh, for people. For uh, people who want to purchase real estate, because uh, the seven percent their affordability is uh, in a historic low. You know, as a matter of fact, only seventeen percent of the uh, of the people uh, in the United States can afford to buy an average house, uh, which is uh, you know, like in California, especially. Yet uh, the, the 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 price of the average house is at, at uh, eight hundred thirty eight thousand. So so only 17% of people can afford to buy, uh, 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 you know, an average house like that. And, and as a matter of fact, you need to, you need to earn 
uh, over two hundred thousand dollars in order to go to to qualify for an average uh, 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 mortgage uh, for uh, 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 for for a house that has eight hundred thirty eight thousand. So uh, it's very very difficult for the first uh, uh, home buyers, and that is why uh, right now the um, the real estate. Uh, even though that there are a lot of demand for the buyers, they are not qualified. So, so what can you do? Uh, this we are we are putting us in a very very uh, precarious uh, situation. Now, but uh, even though the interest rate is at seven percent, and historically it's not that high, you know, and when you compare to a nineteen eighty one, well, where the interest rate was at eighteen percent, you know, the economic economic. Uh, uh, the, at that time, the Reagan was the uh, was the president, and then, then we we term it, uh, we we name it as a Reaganomics. Uh, at that time, eighteen percent, you know. So who who's gonna buy property at eighteen percent, eighteen percent? But keep in mind, though, um, in more uh, right perspective, is that at that time the 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 the, the price of real estate is is pretty low uh, uh, compared to uh, the high price of that that we have experiencing now. But anyway, the interest rate at even at seven percent uh, is not uh, historically is not very high. But if you want to go back to uh, uh, two or three percent, I, I think it's forever gone. Uh, I don't think that it's going to come back uh, again. So we just have to get used to it. Uh, we get to uh, to work around it. We get to uh, have the mentality that hey, you know, uh, uh, the real estate is uh, for a long long haul, and uh, you know, the situation change. Um, and the in interest rate may come uh, go up and down, uh, you know, in cycles, and and so this is this is this is uh, the way of uh, of life, you know. So uh, you just have to get get used to it. Now, but uh, uh, interestingly, uh, you know, or unfortunately, the mortgage, uh, uh, um, uh, you know, the, they, they they are not too much, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, foreclosures at this point, and. Yeah, and, and but but the 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 mortgage application is the lowest in thirty years, meaning that that, that even though we have a, a strong the bias, uh, you know the uh, the transaction itself is not uh, very uh, uh, optimum, and and in, in, in uh, being a real estate broker, we need to to uh, to have a high level of uh, of a transaction. That's the way that we make the commissions, right? So if you have more deals. You get more uh, uh, commissions, and and right now this is not uh, the way it is now. It's uh, it's the lowest in the thirty years. That is why a lot of a lot of uh, of uh, agents are suffering, and this is industry wide. So it's nothing uh, particularly just you, you know. So uh, the whole industry is pretty uh, anemic right now. Uh, but uh, uh, fortunately, you know the the growth. Uh, the growth rate uh, of all the uh, regions in California, uh, uh, you know, coming up pretty good, you know, and and you can see that uh, that uh, you know in the um, um, in 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 they, they are they're all they're all starting off on a positive note, and uh, and they're they all uh, 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 increasing, you know, like uh, sixteen percent, fourteen percent, seven percent, eight percent, so they. They are, they are uh, you know, coming back, uh, I think uh, they're coming back pretty healthily, yeah. So, and uh, <clears throat> the interest uh, to find out that too is that the, the, the higher end house is rebounding more quickly than the lower end. You know, anything that is lower than um, than uh, $1 million is, is rebounding not very as, uh, as good as the, the, the houses that are selling for more than a uh, $1 million. You can see that see uh, for after this uh, one million dollar mark, uh, the 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 growth rate is pretty healthy. You know, eighteen percent, seventeen percent, thirty two percent, thirty five percent, thirty four percent. Now, <laughs> it is no surprise because um, because you know the higher end uh, people doesn't de uh, uh, they, they be depend as much on on the loan. You know, they they don't need to qualify the loan as much as uh, the lower end uh, uh, people. Uh, because they either they they can then they can afford to buy all cash, or they can uh, get uh, help from their investment, from their stocks, or from um, from their parents. You know, they, they can make uh, a bigger down payment, and they can they can uh, qualify better uh, 
and they don't even sometimes they don't even need to to get along and, and they have better way to get along if they want to get along so so the uh, the um, the high end houses are rebounding uh, uh, more quickly than the lower end uh, houses um, which surprisingly right but um, but that's that's what's going on and uh, the existing the single family residence pending sale is um, nothing nothing dramatically changed and it's still at uh, uh, <clears throat> 3,800 uh, uh, units uh, in 2024, and uh, <laughs> single house sale, <clears throat> pending sale, they have a surge in, in January uh, for each 16.4 percent. But uh, since then, you know, uh, and, uh, and February is really uh, dropped down quite a bit because of the interest rate. Uh, the interest rate that uh, kind of uh, creep up to uh, more more than seven percent uh, beginning um, from last week. So um, the, the, for the, 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 the data for, for February is not as good as data for the January, uh, but I hope that is uh, temporary and hopefully that will reverse the, the, the growth rate uh, uh, next month. But it has, um, having said that, you know, it has to, you wait until uh, um, the decision of the, the Fed, uh, which will be very pivotal uh, in determining the, the activity of the real estate market. And the new uh, existing the single family resident listing added to M to MLS, uh, not, nothing uh, really uh, uh, very, uh, very encouraging. Uh, is uh, is not doing uh, very uh, good. Uh, it's only at eleven thousand, and uh, which is uh, probably one of the lowest in, uh, in in the history of the real estate market. And the uh, existing uh, single-family resident active listing at uh, twenty-nine thousand, uh, which is still uh, you know only half of the peak uh, in um, uh, in uh, two thousand twenty-two. So uh, nothing nothing really changed much. Um, the median uh, day on the market is thirty days, which is still as acceptable. Anything that's all, uh, 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 less than thirty days is uh, pretty optimal. Uh, which means that uh, you can uh, you can sell your property in an average of 30 days, uh, so still not too 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 bad, um, you know. But compared, of course, compared to like uh, in J July of 2022, which it take only 14 days, uh, still uh, you know uh, not a, a very um, uh, you know nothing to compare with that. Uh, but uh, but 30, 30 days is not too bad. And so if you're looking at the uh, increased uh, price, you know, the sales, sale price, uh, you, you can find out that about 35% are uh, uh, selling at an increased uh, to, uh, price uh, uh, more than the uh, listed, uh, listed price. Uh, and then you have about 40% uh, um, yeah, uh, which is uh, with reduced uh, price, you know, lower than the, uh, than the uh, uh, listed price. And so, uh, only about 25% or so as original price, uh, which is uh, a pretty pretty good mix. I mean, you know, nothing, nothing, nothing bad about it, uh, but uh, you can see that, uh, you know, this this is still a good demand, um, good demand. And, and also uh, if you can um, find some uh, uh, some property, you can you have a good chance of having a reduced price because um, the, the, the sellers are more willing to sell right now. So, so that's a good, good sign too. And, and then you, you, you also can find out that the, uh, the California price increased uh, seven a month in a row. And although it dipped down a little bit uh, month to month compared uh, to last month, it uh, actually has increased 5% compared to last year, you know, so, uh, so if, if people are expecting that the, the, the uh, price of the real estate drops, um, you know, the uh, tough luck is not going to is not going to to drop. Uh, it actually, it's, it has that tendency of uh, continuing to increase, especially when 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 the interest rate, you know, if the Fed uh, drop the interest rate by the twenty five percent point or uh, fifty percentage point, they will have a big boost on the price of uh, the the real estate. And at that time, a lot of uh, a buy will fl uh, flood into the market and and and, and try to uh, uh, buy real estate, and, and then will we'll pop up the the, the real estate price. 
So tell your client, you know, if you can afford it, buy it, you know. And then you can always you can always uh, well, refinance later when the interest rate is uh, is lower. So if you, we can afford it, I'm saying that if you can afford it, okay, if you can qualify and afford it, buy the property. You'll never go wrong, okay? Because uh, in Cal especially in California, the price of the real estate is not on the job, okay? So educate your client. And then, um, you know, interestingly too, you know, the, the delinquency is only uh, a half of the historical average, uh, which is good, which means that the uh, there are not too many uh, foreclosures uh, in the horizon or actually in the current uh, current situation, there's not a lot of, um, of uh, foreclosures either. And most of the banks are, you know, pretty uh, holding it on uh, pretty good and, and uh, they're finding out um, the, the foreclosure. Uh, uh, the reason is because uh, people, you know, they, a lot, lot, they have, they, people have a lot of equity in their homes. And, you know, uh, actually 28% uh, of all the loans has an interest rate of 3% or less. Can you believe that? 28% has uh, 20, uh, interest rate, which is less than 3%, which means that they're enjoying a very low interest uh, rate, rate. So why, why should they, they sell? And, and they have a lot of equities in, in their house. Uh, over 90% of the people have, have uh, at least some kind of equity in the house. So they are not going to sell. They are not going to 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 to, to put their property uh, or for on, on foreclosure. Uh, the worst comes worst. They just sell it on the open market and and liquidate the the, the equity and then uh, just walk, you know. So, um, uh, so so you don't you don't expect too much uh, foreclosure at this uh, at this moment uh, or in this situation. Uh, it's different from uh, 2008 where you have a lot of foreclosure because. People don't have equity at all, so the situation is totally different, and the dynamic is, is totally different. So uh, you have to educate your your uh, your client that uh, you know you know if they want to invest in real estate, hey, you know they have to buy the bullet and 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 and, uh, and uh, buy the property and move on. Okay. Now I want to update you with some of the the legal. Uh, uh, I think that what is happening in the in the real estate market. Remember that that the last year uh, the uh, uh, Los Angeles City passed a uh, mention tax, which means that if uh, you, if if the property is uh, more than five million dollars, and then they have a transfer tax uh, up to five percent, uh, which uh, over uh, twenty uh, five million. Which means that if the um, when the property is sold at ten million dollars. And then the excess is five million, so there's uh, the transfer tax will be five million times uh, uh, five percent, which is like two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Imagine that you would put the transfer tax twenty five, uh, uh, two hundred and fifty thousand the transfer for tax instead of like yeah for a typical uh, 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 transaction a few thousand dollars. That's ridiculous, right? So uh, because of that, they 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 they. The legal action fund, which is maintained by the uh, California Association of Realty uh, uh, Realtors, um, and uh, uh, you know they, they decided to approve a twenty-five thousand uh, dollar contribution to support the appeal in this lawsuit to try to over overturn this uh, this uh, uh, you know transfer tax uh, based on the uh, the taking clause uh, based on the proposition thirteen based on the um, due process and he's uh, free speech uh, so so um they, 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 you know the california associated realtor is trying their best to uh to to help them help the people in, in la city or the landlord in la city to appeal or to uh, repeal this uh this law uh that i know is is um is it's a hot uphill battle but nevertheless uh they um they, they try to support it and as a matter of fact, uh, they supported the uh, last year, the 2023, uh, they approved the $25,000 for the lawsuit that was filed by the, um, by the apartment, uh, uh, apartment Association of Greater Los Angeles, but they failed, unfortunately. So, and another th uh, case that you should be aware of is, uh, is the, the Sheets versus the County of El Dorado, 
uh, which uh, impose a twenty-three thousand uh, dollars traffic impact fee. You know, they they come up with uh, very ingenious. They, they come up with all different kind of uh, 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 fees you know, to 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 generate the revenue for the city. And this is one of them. You know, and this I think this is uh, this is ridiculous. And and that's twenty-three thousand dollars for to build a manufactured home on his lot. You know, ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> so this is totally unfair. So they want to find out. Uh, they want to appeal this, and so that um, you know whether it's uh, it, that's constitutionally um, forbidden. So the the last one is the Lassa versus the Bishop, uh, which is a case that deal with the fiduciary duty, uh, the, the 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 assignment of a fiduciary duty. Uh, the, the question is whether you can assign your fiduciary duty to a third person. Okay. In other words, if if um, if if uh, you know your client uh, doesn't want to sue you, uh, then now can they uh, uh, transfer their fiduciary duty uh, to um, to another person? For example, uh, uh, you and me to sue uh, the the agent uh, for for breach of uh, fiduciary duty. Uh, this is this is a long range. You know, it, it's it's. It's a very, very uh, wild, uh, wild um, thing to do, you know, because if if that's the case, if they can do that, then there will be a flood of uh, lawsuits, even if they, you know, your client doesn't want to sue you uh, because of your relationship with them. You can assign somebody who is totally, totally, uh, uh, you know, unrelated to you, and somebody who is not totally unknown to you, and they can pursue uh, are you uh, for the breach of duty uh, for those duty that you have uh, were, were obligated to your client uh, you know so there are a lot of uh, uh, attorney you know if this is successful a lot of attorneys we were, were chasing after uh, uh, those you know buyers or sellers and and they are trying to uh, get their facility duty uh, lawsuit and 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 sue you know all the uh, the real estate agent, and that will be a nightmare, you know. And and they'll, as if this is not, uh, you know, it, it, we already already have a lot of lawsuits against the agent, and this is, you know, if one of them, this is one of them that they want to add it to the uh, arsenal. Um, so so um, and and um, so they're going to trying to fight that, and hopefully, uh, uh, you know, so so if they can they, they can stop this, that that would be good. But if they cannot. Uh, God bless you. Uh, you know, you know uh, real estate agent. They will have a, a lot of trouble uh, answering their official duty to to the the clients and and whatever that uh, you know happened, they, they can assign that uh, to somebody uh, who can sue you. Uh, to un unrelated uh, people who can uh, sue you for the fiduciary duty that you have breached uh, 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 over the your own client. Okay. So let's hope that that, that won't happen. But uh, this is something that uh, um, you should keep in mind. But anyway, I'll stop here. This is all what I have to show uh, share with you today. And do you have any questions that you want to ask me at this moment? Please do. Uh, I think we have good, good timing, right? Uh, Robin, right just on, on time. Yeah. You you did it just right on the button. Look, eleven <laughs> o'clock. <laughs> Man, there's a California is just so happy. I can't believe it. Yeah, just, I know it's crazy. It's crazy you know. I, I think they're just trying yeah. to find things to keep attorneys busy. Yeah, Jeez. yeah, crazy, right? Yeah. Wow. Any questions for Peter before we end our uh, meeting for to for this morning? No. All right, folks. All right. Well, have a nice week. I'll see you next week. All right. Thank you, everybody, for attending. Thank you to our affiliates. Uh, the business is out there still, so just keep keep chugging along, okay? All right, folks, I'll see you guys uh, Wednesday, Friday, or next Monday. Right. Bye-bye.